thank you for watching. I'm here today to talk about building community and influencing change. And a lot of what this came from was me just wanting to be in public, which is a hard one. All right, I'm adding on Lee because she's okay. Hi, Hassan. Hi. I was just introducing the whole concept and everything. Oh, great. Hi, Haney. I see that you joined. So this Facebook Live, being vulnerable in public. One of the things I don't do and haven't done in a long time is posted stuff about politics or just opinions on current events even on social media because a lot of what I've seen and a lot of what I feel like people have talked about when it comes to social media, but just in general, right, in social interactions is that we're critical, really critical, and we hold judgment more than we hold curiosity and that we're quick to write people off. And that is the enemy of vulnerability. And a lot of my work, and I feel like all of my work in a way, has been about encouraging vulnerability so that as we together, we're building something we actually love. So this conversation today and future conversations are about this concept, about what it takes to actually connect and have some grace with one another and be authentic and be vulnerable in a way that creates that vortex, that positive vortex in stage. So that's what Hassan and I are gonna be talking about today. She's my first guest here in this little experiment. And Hassan, I'd love for you to introduce Um, Yeah, got a little sunny here for, by surprise. Um, I'm Hassan Lee, and I'm the founder of a company called Table Tribes. And I'm also uh, currently working on a platform called Dokusa, which you can visit us at dokusa.com, D-O-K-U-S-A. Um, and I'm broadly interested in how technology can augment human interaction, and we can start to transform these relationships into action. Damn, I didn't even know the second company. Oh, That's I know. Cool. We're in stealth. Now shared with no, a few thousand no, no. people on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then knowing attention spans, I really just want to jump right into it. And I was going to ask you this question about what's your definition of grace first. Mm, mm -hmm. I actually think I want to start with the situation where a recent oh, moment where you had to dig deep for grace and you felt it give you peace. Yeah. Um... So I've, I've personally divorced myself from my family, and I have a tough relationship um, with one of my family members, and we just trigger each other, as family members can. And um, one, one day, like relatively recently, um, we're, we're just starting to get into each other, yelling at me, things are escalating, I'm trying to just practice meditation while it's happening. <laughs> And, um, and then, like, I think of a new tool in my arsenal. Um, and I just, like, get up and I hug her. And I've never done that before. We're not a huggy family. We, we didn't grow up with this. And I just, like, hug her. I've, like, learned how to hug. And she just stopped. Like, everything just stopped, all the escalation. And everything just calmed down. And, yeah, it was amazing, the power of a hug. And you said, was this, who was this with? Oh, um, a family member. A family member. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and how did you, how did that feel once that happened? Well, it felt amazing. I mean, like, yeah, we, we talk about, you know, abstractions of love can overcome conflict and, you know, you and I have written an essay on this and, um, but yeah, to actually practice it and see it in play and then like directly see results manifest from it um, in such a quick feedback loop, that was amazing. Um, so yeah, it, it put me instantly at peace and it felt really empowering. Um, for me, I think something deeper crystallized in that moment. Mm. That's beautiful. And how, how would you describe grace in that situation? 
Um, I had to really think very deeply about this because I don't really have a deep um, faith tradition. And um, I mean, like I'm familiar with the concept of practicing grace and, you know, I went to art school. So we talk a lot about like graceful gestures and things like that, graceful people. Um, but yeah, I think the way that you're thinking about it, like the full power of grace, of living with grace and in grace um, is something I haven't really thought very deeply about. And so, yeah, I think that grace is the power that manifests when um, compassion for yourself is at equilibrium with compassion for others. When compassion for yourself is at equilibrium with compassion for others. I think, yeah, that's my starting point. Wow. I'd love to hear other people's perspectives on this. Yeah, yeah. If you're watching this or even later, I would love to see in the comments what your definition of grace is. Because that's deep. And how, how do you feel like that comes up for you in your day-to-day -day life, if at all? I know that you said it's not something you think about, but the definition feels like something that may hit you on a more regular Yeah, I, th I think I practice that. Um, the attempt at trying to express um, what's internal and, and the balance of the internal expression being the same as your external um, expression. And that's something I've been practicing for, for a very long time um, or trying to. And so I would say that that's how I navigate my day-to-day -day life. And I think I just didn't call that grace. Um, I don't know what I called it. I just, just living, just being. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear that. And then how do you feel like that definition of grace intersects with building community? Knowing that's what you are about with table tribes. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, community is a tough one. It's, it's tough to build deliberate, intentional community. And for a lot of people, it can take a lot out of them. And this is where you start to talk about like the need for self-care and the need to unplug and... Um, and so this is where that equilibrium starts to become unbalanced, right? And, and so when that happens, it's hard. It, it takes energy away from the ability to build and give to other people um, the energy that that effort needs. And so it's a constant sort of um, practice or, or a daily sort of struggle, more practice that um, those two things need to be balanced. Can you say your definition of grace again? Um, the power that manifests when um, compassion for yourself is at equilibrium with compassion for others. Word. Word. Yeah. And even my own thoughts thinking about if you were trying to build community and compassion for yourself didn't actually equal your compassion for others. Mm-hmm. I know I'm live right now, so there's something I want to say that I feel I don't really want to say because I know that I'm live. Um, you can write a blog say, post. Say, say what? Oh, you can write a blog post. Write a blog post, yeah. But So just I'm trying to scrub it a little bit so that I'm not going to get hit. But when I think about that definition of grace and when I think about what's going on in our country right now, I feel like when we elect elected officials of any kind, this definition of grace and checking whether they are able to hold compassion for themselves and then seeing how that expresses itself as compassion for others, mm -hmm. that, that actually feels like governance, you know? That's a hallmark for governance because if you don't mm -hmm. have compassion for others, you're not gonna be able to make resource distribution decisions and mm -hmm. you're not gonna be able to compromise or do anything. And I feel like governance is pretty key to building community. So, yeah. And we, we've know. talked about this before, right? The power of what happens if um, a person is whole and that starts to ripple outwards into other people who are whole, um, then, then what, what's the collective power of that community then? So... I think that's, that, that then manifests into governance, right? You start to need rules to control, uh, to provide a framework or a structure around that. Exactly. 
But then if we're taking it into the vulnerable space, I feel like these are concepts that at least I talk about a lot. And I feel like the people, many of the people I'm around talk about a lot, but there's still, when I read what's in mainstream culture and when I look at current events and then I feel into these conversations, mm. the gap is humongous. And it's actually one of the reasons why the word grace is something I like. Because mm. to me, grace implies, it's like generosity plus some kind of spiritual or religious yeah. connotation. And I feel like that's been a big divide from what I've seen is people, like even in the fake news stuff, Right. One of the things that kept occurring to me around fake news is that people who are religious, there's like a whole set of people in this country who mm. the idea of story as the foundation of their faith. Right. And I don't divorce myself from that. I was raised pretty Christian mm -hmm. and that the stories inherent in Christianity are a huge part of my identity mm. and to I also feel like when, when I get up against real deep walls within myself, it's stories and it's archetypes that break me out of that. It's not facts. Yeah. Like yep. the fact that I may be harming someone else or hurting someone else isn't enough to make me stop doing that behavior. But mm -hmm. if, there's, if there's a, well, when I put what I'm doing to somebody else maybe in the form of a story or like statistics just don't work, there's, there's a nugget in there that I'm trying to get to around why the word grace mm. and how story well really where i started from was this concept of the gap right so i think i'd love to turn that back around on you now yeah that that was really what i was trying to say there is a gap between what we're talking about right now and what i feel like everybody else is experiencing and the gap that i see a part of it is the war between story and fact and I feel like that's really tied into this concept of compassion. And I think it's tied into language. So you talking about grace and me talking about grace for me feels like it's a part of it. Or at least that's what I would hope it would be. But mm -hmm. when it comes back to you, I'm curious about what you, how you experience the gap between what we're talking about right now and the way that you feel everybody else is interacting. Mm -hmm. So the gap between story and fact. Well, no, it's, 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 it's and, and the, that, that was, that was my version of the gap between like vulnerability, authenticity, compassion for self and others, and the way mm -hmm. everybody needs to be acting right now. That's the gap. Like, what would it take for people to have grace, basically, with themselves yeah. and others? I think there is a big gap between what's happening top down and what's happening bottom up. And I think some of these concepts exist in like what people's day to day lives from the um, like out in the real world and then kind of butting up against policy decisions and all of the fake news and the, the things coming out of DC, um, information that's happening right now. And I think the disconnect comes from there just being maybe a ceiling to what can be achieved as individuals when individuals are deliberately being kind of segmented and cut off from each other and um, this need to kind of go in and finding faith and spiritualism and community and belonging. Um, but then th there are real, there's power, there's collective power in that, and that needs to happen. And then there's also a lot of top-down forces trying to break that apart. So maybe maybe that's that's a gap that I observe. And then what about, do you feel like there's a gap when it comes to everyday people? and not just top down and the way that that's interacting when it comes to the way we treat each other. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's, that's the current buzzword polarization, right? Um, I actually don't know. I'm not 100% convinced we're as polarized as the media makes us out to be. Um, Ooh, Say more about that. <laughs> Well, I mean, at the same time, like we have so many coalitions that have never existed before um, in history. And you've got like groups of people who are so diverse from each other, like fighting for each other. Um, like these marches are so diverse um, and multicultural and multilingual and multiethnic and uh, there's age diversity. And, and you haven't had this scale of cohesion at the same time while you also have this vast like 
polarization on a, on a partisan level. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to connect that in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, but, that's, but at the, yeah. yeah, but I think it's both. Both are happening simultaneously. That's a, that's. So what came up for me when I heard you say that is how it feels like the way that I connected in my head and the way that I have connected it is that I feel like we're more real right now. And that being more real means that there's more opportunity for real deep connection and real deep conflict and real deep love and real deep fear. Like basically all the realness in terms of the core emotions and the core experiences we have as humans are on full display right now. And we are in them in a really big way. We're not, we're not in them a little bit. We're in them a lot and they're a lot more yeah. upfront. And so yeah. the communities that you're in are emotionally intelligent and skilled at being connected then that is the, that's the biggest thing you're going to experience. And those of us who do that are finding more of that. Yeah. And if, if there are those of us and you know, I don't feel like we all have all of it inside of us. And I don't ever like, I'm like, these people are emotionally intelligent over here. And these <laughs> people are fear over here. Like, I actually don't think that that's, that's not real. We're all somewhere in there most of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I feel like depending on where we are, there's just more of it right now. And so maybe, it does, it maybe we're also, me. oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no, go ahead. Maybe we're also. Oh, maybe we're also at a stage then where, where we're either awakened or we're apathetic. Like maybe it's an all or nothing mm -hmm. proposition right now. Um, and yeah. so maybe that's the disconnect. That, maybe that contributes to the disconnect. Like people, are, there is a broad apathetic middle at the same time. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so then if you had to talk about a takeaway from this conversation in terms of practices that you do to stay on the good side of this, what would they be? I think um, just getting out more, talking to more people. Um, I have a tendency to sometimes self-isolate and I can kind of go into hermit mode pretty quickly and be completely happy in that. So, so I'm not like, it's not, a, it's not a symptom of being sad or lonely. It's just, I, I like it. Um, but also it's not at the same time healthy. And, and I think also at the same time, um, that's not the way to best contribute to the world. And so I think one of the things that I've been trying to be mindful of is how to, um, I guess, uh, max put it into like economic, dry economics language, but how to like maximize my uh, social collisions for the day. And so trying to just get out and like not be afraid of talking to people. I, I, like I, I would not put that in the fear category. I feel like it's just a numbers game. If you talk to 100 people in a day and like 50, per, 50 people reject you, that's still a 50% win. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I also meditate a lot more these days. Girl, me too. Really? Oh, <laughs> um, so I'm hearing you say that balance between having me time mm -hmm. and encouraging yourself to connect mm -hmm. and then meditation. I yeah. think that my, my takeaway from this conversation um, is just the constant reminder that all of it is true at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to I agree. I spend a lot of time online. So my vision and picture of the polarization, I think I, I look for the polarization because I'm interested in shadow work and I'm mm. interested in conflict integration. So I'm always looking for it. But if I wasn't looking for it, my predominant experience with my friends and with the people that I interact with every day is one of cohesion mm -hmm. and is one of actual grace, which is pretty interesting. So I feel mm. like you reminded me of that today so i'm grateful for this conversation yeah thank you thank you what, 
you remind folks where they can find you? Oh, um, can connect with me on Facebook. Just add me. And to say the names of your, your new organization again. Oh, uh, Dokusa, D-O-K-U-S-A dot com. Perfect. And if y'all want to connect with me, we're going to be having more of these conversations and I'm going to be interviewing people over time. So I'm going to put in a link in the comments to sign up if you want to hear more about um, future conversations like this and also tools to And thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye.